President Biden and VP Harris meeting with lawmakers from both sides of the aisle today to try and corral bipartisan support for the massive infrastructure package. The package seeing pushback among lawmakers, particularly around the tax hike. A new study finds that raising the corporate tax rate and other changes under the infrastructure proposal would cost a million jobs in the first two years. And what about court packing? Biden announced a new commission to review the possibility of adding more justices to the U.S. Supreme Court. Now there's debate over Biden's own past comments. Tune into Deep Dive as we explore these topics and more. Hello and welcome. This is Deep Dive and I'm Tiffany Meyer. Let's kick off with President Biden's massive infrastructure plan. Biden and VP Harris are meeting with lawmakers from both sides of the aisle today to try and corral bipartisan support. According to the White House, Biden and Harris will discuss the need for a bold once in a generation investment in America to put millions of people to work. Biden's massive $2.2 trillion infrastructure plan still seeing pushback among lawmakers. Senator John Thune saying on Fox News Sunday only about 6% of the president's proposal actually goes to what everyday Americans would describe as infrastructure. If Democrats are interested in roads, bridges, highways, and perhaps broadband, there is a deal to be had there. He says Republicans would be willing to get behind a smaller infrastructure package, saying on Fox News, if they are sincere about doing something on infrastructure, I think there are Republicans who would vote for it. He also criticized Biden's tax hike, saying it would hurt the economy and that it doesn't make sense. After we just reformed our tax code in 2017 to then raise taxes to make the United States the highest tax place in the world. And a new study finds that raising the corporate tax rate and other changes under the infrastructure proposal would cost a million jobs in the first two years. The study goes on to note the average annual job losses would be 600,000 each year over 10 years, and real wages would fall by 0.6 percent in the long run. And what are the costs? The GDP would lose $117 billion and investment in equipment and structures $80 billion in 2023. President and CEO of the National Association of Manufacturers, Jay Timmons, saying after decades of advocating for a tax system that provided competitive rates and modern international tax provisions, manufacturers in America kept our promises following the enactment of the 2017 tax reforms. We raised wages and benefits, we hired more American workers, and we invested in our communities. He called the tax reforms in 2017 rocket fuel and warns if the current administration rolls back those reforms, manufacturing workers will lose out on jobs, growth and raises. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, meanwhile, defended a corporate tax increase in her recent op-ed in The Wall Street Journal. She claims the tax cuts of 2017 put America at a disadvantage. She wrote, the law creates an incentive for U.S. companies to offshore their workers and investments and to shift their profits to tax havens. Representative Kevin Brady fired back by calling Yellen's op-ed misguided and inaccurate. Brady helped craft the 2017 tax reform. He says, in my view, their tax proposals coupled with what we've seen out of the Senate will trigger a second wave of U.S. companies moving their jobs and research overseas. Biden's tax policy actually makes it better for a foreign company to operate in America than an American company to operate here at home. Adding this policy is very dangerous to blue collar workers. The Biden administration has been pushing the infrastructure proposal as a job creator, but as to how many jobs they'll create has been brought into the spotlight. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg walked back comments over the weekend. He says on Fox News he had misinterpreted the number of jobs it would create, being off by around 16 million. He'd previously said the American Jobs Plan is about a generational investment. It's going to create 19 million jobs. And we are talking about economic growth that's going to go on for years and years. But over the weekend, Fox News' Chris Wallace pointed out the job creation estimates Buttigieg was citing come from a Moody's Analytics report, which says the economy will add 16.3 million jobs without the infrastructure bill and 2.7 million more with it. Wallace asked Buttigieg why mislead folks. 
Buttigieg says, you are right, I should have been more precise. Adding the difference in jobs that that particular analysis suggests is 2.7 million more. That is a great place to be. Biden also previously mentioned 19 million jobs, saying on April 2nd, independent analysis shows that if we pass this plan, the economy will create 19 million jobs, good jobs, blue collar jobs, jobs that pay well. That analysis is from the Moody's Analytics report. It estimated job creation numbers under three scenarios, with no government intervention, with just the American Rescue Plan, and with both the American Rescue Plan and the American Jobs Plan. The report shows that without either package, the economy would create around 16 million jobs between the fourth quarter of 2020 and the fourth quarter of 2030. That number rises to 16.3 million with the American Rescue Plan and then to 19 million with the addition of the American Jobs Plan. Biden's remarks are then arguably correct, but they leave out the fact that that number of 16 million jobs only comes about without any government intervention. Now, back to trying to garner Republican support. But a judge says the package includes items popular among Republican voters, such as child and elderly care. He encouraged GOP lawmakers to ease their opposition to including such items in the package. He said on CNN State of the Union, I'm going to keep burning up those phone lines, talking to Republicans, listening to Republicans, and trying to get somewhere we can all agree on. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has already dismissed narrowing the bill to only include traditional infrastructure. She says on CBS's Face the Nation that she feels infrastructure includes education and housing investment. Pelosi and Senator Bernie Sanders are defending Biden's push for the massive infrastructure bill, saying there is a need to address, quote, human infrastructure. Pelosi said on CBS's Face the Nation that infrastructure is about education, about getting children healthily in school with separation, sanitation, ventilation. It's about investments in housing as well. Adding overwhelmingly, this bill is about infrastructure in the traditional sense of the word. So what is human infrastructure? Pelosi went on to say, we also think that infrastructure, there's a need for workforce development in order to have the workforce fully participate and how we go forward in child care so that women can be involved in that as well. Adding so it's physical infrastructure, it's also human infrastructure that is involved. Sanders, meanwhile, said on MSNBC on Saturday, human infrastructure means housing. You've got a half a million people in this country who are homeless. You've got 19 million households who are spending 50 percent of their limited incomes on housing. We need to build housing. Sanders went on to say, and by the way, when you deal with housing, you create jobs. Even without Republican support, Democrats can turn to budget reconciliation again. That's how the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package was passed. But moderate Democrat Senator Joe Manchin has said he's against using the method after the partisan passage of the COVID-19 package. He is also opposed to raising the corporate tax rate so high, instead suggesting a 25 percent rate increase. The Biden administration hopes that Congress will make major progress on the infrastructure package by Memorial Day and that it'll pass the bill by July 4th. Now, infrastructure isn't the only big spending Biden aims to do. He also wants a blank check numbering also in the trillions. Biden asked Congress on Friday to authorize a $1.52 trillion federal spending plan for 2022. That's for a 16 percent increase in funding for non-defense domestic programs and a relatively flat 1.7 percent increase for defense and an 8 percent increase to fund the climate change fight, the IRS and other social programs. According to a detailed blueprint, the first spending request is $769 billion for non-defense programs and $753 billion in national defense funding for the upcoming year. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki said at a briefing on Friday, later this spring, we will release the president's full budget, which will present a unified, comprehensive plan to address the overlapping crisis we face. Adding this will include the big proposal Biden has just introduced, referring to the $2.25 trillion infrastructure plan, as well as other proposals that he will introduce between now and then. The spending proposal also includes $24 billion for domestic climate programs and investments in clean energy. That includes buying electric vehicles for the USPS. 
$815 million to incorporate climate impacts into pre-disaster planning and projects. $1.4 billion would also be sent to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, allowing for more work on climate observation and forecasting. $900 $900 million for the IRS. That's to ramp up audits and try and recoup an extra $175 million in lost taxes. That's from an estimated 21% of income that some of the wealthiest families don't report. Also, $3 billion for immigration, a topic in the midst of a lot of heated debate at the moment. And $2.7 billion for Amtrak. Other areas include 23% increase in health spending and a whopping 40% increase for education. The expansive proposal could see pushback on Capitol Hill, as Democrats must win over at least 10 Senate Republicans who maintain filibuster power in the upper chamber. And now one of Biden's campaign promises has held up. He set up a commission on Friday to review the possibility of adding more justices to the U.S. Supreme Court. Biden announced he will put together a commission to study whether packing the Supreme Court would be feasible. When then-candidate Biden was on the campaign trail, he was asked about his plan for the commission. But when Biden was the Delaware senator, he was strongly opposed to court packing. He said at that time, it was a terrible, terrible mistake to make, and it put in question for an entire decade the independence of the most significant body in the Congress. In my view, the most significant body in this country, the Supreme Court of the United States of America. Now, many are wondering what changed. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki faced questions about Biden's change of opinion. She said the panel is asked to do a number of things takes a number of steps, including pros and cons, on exactly that issue. They will also be looking at the court's role in the constitutional system, the length of service and turnover of justice on the court, the membership and size on the court. Now, some Democrats are raising opposition, including West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, saying he won't support packing the court. He says, I will not vote to do that. I will not vote to pack the courts. And liberal Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer pushed back on the idea of court packing. He issued a warning to those in favor, saying to think long and hard. He says such alteration would undermine confidence in the court's decisions and weaken its hard-won power to act as a check on presidents of both parties and Congress. He says the court's authority is based on the belief its opinions are driven by legal principle and not politics. But what do you think? Let me know below. Thanks for tuning in to Deep Dive. I'm Tiffany Meyer, and see you soon.